Hey guys, Brady here. Welcome back to the classroom. You're just in time for another good one and let's just dive right in. So say you're in a situation where you're on set shooting and you can't either bring any lights or you just simply don't have any lights. That's totally fine because in this video we're talking about how to get super cinematic, super clean daylight interior shots using only natural light and making the absolute most of your window lighting. Okay, so we're on set, no lights, but we need a nice shot. What are we gonna do? Where are we gonna put Sarah? Where are we gonna put the camera? So many questions and the answer is a window. Windows very, very often provide a very large source of indirect soft lighting. So unless sun is blasting straight through that window at like golden hour or something like that, windows are always gonna cast a lot of very soft indirect light across your subject's face and be very nice and pleasing to look at. So we're putting Sarah in front of the window and then where are we gonna put the camera is the next question. Well, as we talked about in our lighting faces video a little while back, we're going for a far side key and utilizing a far side key does a great job of creating a lot of dimension and depth and contrast and ultimately interest in your subject's face. And by making all this depth and interest, it really gives you that cinematic look as opposed to a near side key. As you can see here, having the light on the front side of Sarah's face, there's just no dimension and her face is very flat and lacks a lot of interest. No offense, Sarah, we're talking about the lighting here. That is all I promise you look great. But comparing the near side and the far side key shots, in the far side key shot, Sarah's face just has a lot more dimension, contrast, depth, and depth is key to any cinematic shot, you wanna have depth. So in this case, the far side key shot definitely wins. So with Sarah there sitting at the table, we're gonna take the camera and what we're gonna do with that is be shooting into the shadows. So we're not necessarily gonna be backlighting Sarah with the window, but definitely our light source, the window, is going to be on the back side of her relative to the camera. So that way you really see the light from the window come in, hit the back side of her face and roll off into the shadows, into the, the side of the camera where we're looking at. And that's where you really start to see that low key, far side key look that we're going for. So one thing I really do always suggest is shears like this, like these really thin transparent white shears, just enough to soften the light a smidge more, just a little tad more, but also shears do a great job of hiding whatever is outside, whether it's a light or an ugly landscape that you don't wanna see. Pretty much if you don't want your viewers to know what's going on outside, shears do a great job of hiding that. So if you want them to see that there's people playing outside, kids playing outside, whatever, shears might not be the best idea. But if you really wanna hide what's out there, definitely utilize shears, they do a great job. Okay, so Sarah's there and really with no lighting, no work at all, just camera placement and uh, talent placement, the shot looks super great. Super moody, dramatic, contrasty, a lot of depth going on here already. But say it's not cutting it with the window light. Say the window light's acting as a lot more of like a backlight rim light and you wanna wrap a little bit more around her face. That's perfect. We're gonna come up with a solution to that right now. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take some white bounce boards. So either uh, like the foam board that I have or a white poster board or a white reflector. You're gonna take that and rather than bouncing light back into the shadow side of her face, like the far side of the window, we're gonna keep that shadow side in the shadows. So instead of just bouncing the light in to fill that, we're gonna take this bounce board and we're just gonna continue wrapping it around her face from the window side. So you're still gonna keep the reflector on the window side of the scene, but you're just gonna be taking some of the light from the window off that bounce board and wrapping it around the rest of her cheekbones and the rest of her nose, filling in a little bit more of the shadows on her face, really making that pleasing roll off that we're going for really soft, really smooth, and ultimately not noticeable. And the lighting now is gonna be really smoothly wrapping around her face into the shadows. And since ambient light, especially daylight, has a tendency to bounce around off walls and places we don't want and act as a fill light where we might not want it, we sometimes wanna maintain this contrast level that we're going for. And doing so, we're gonna introduce something called negative fill. So negative fill, essentially is the opposite of a reflector. So a reflector is often gonna be white, white bounce card, whatever. Negative fill is gonna be black. So in that case, any light that's hitting it, instead of bouncing back to where you want it, it's just kind of gonna be absorbed in this black material and not bounce around. And that way you can really maintain a lot more control of the lighting scenario that you're going for. So if too much light is bouncing around the house, off the walls, back to Sarah's shadow side of her face, we can use that negative fill to really cut what's going on and keep that highlight to shadow roll off really dramatic and 
really roll into the shadows. So make sure to utilize negative fill and play around with it, see how much you need, pull it away, bring it up to her face, find the frame line, do whatever you have to do to find that perfect contrast from the highlights to the shadows and find out what works best for you, you and your shot. So remember the main goal is to create that interest, create that drama and that depth and contrast across her face. And real quick, I don't wanna to touch on it too much because we're sticking to this low key look, but if say there's too much shadow going on, it's really dark and really too moody and dark and gloomy for the look that you're going for, you can still certainly replace that negative fill and just switch it with a reflector and start to bounce and fill in a little bit of that shadow side of her face. Not to flatten it out completely, but just to get a little bit more of a high key look and a brighter, more airy look rather than this moody, dark, gloomy kind of style. But of course, I love low key lighting. I love shadows. So I'm going to stick to this look there. But just another quick tip in case this doesn't necessarily apply to you. But now you've got really, really good control of your lighting and everything looks superb and stellar. But there's one more thing, as you always know, that I really, really like to add, and that's haze or fog. And by doing so, it just adds a more of a gritty sense, a more of a atmospheric sense of, that the viewer can really be put in the shoes of what's going on there. And by doing so, I utilize haze whenever I can. But remember, less is more here. You don't want anyone to know you're using haze. It's just kind of this thing that's that's there, but nobody notices that it's there. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but. Just remember less is more with this. Don't go overboard with it. Haze can very quickly and easily go overboard and turn into something like a like a Western bar film and we don't want that. So less is more, don't forget that. Let's go ahead and break this down step by step because I know it was a lot. So first we're gonna frame our subject and our camera in a way that we're shooting into the shadows. Remember we're, we're, we're maintaining this low key look, this far side key look. So keep our light source, the window in this case, on the back side of Sarah and not necessarily backlighting, but relative to the camera, we're, we're kind of backlighting here. And then next, we're determining if we need shears, if we don't need shears, are we hiding something from the background, are we not? Remember, shears do a great job of just adding a little bit more diffusion to the daylight, making it a tad bit less harsh coming into your subject's face. The next thing we covered was using a bounce card or anything white, just to help wrap that light around into the shadows. Remember, we're not bouncing the light back into fill, we're just, you know, aiding that roll off from the highlights all the way to the shadows using that bounce card. So just make sure to adjust your bounce card, your white, your reflector, and see what works best for you in the shot. Just so you've got enough contrast and enough roll off, but you're not completely washing out that dark shadowed side of her face. Then next after that, you've got a lot of ambient light bouncing around the whole house. You wanna utilize that negative fill just to cut down some of the light, make sure you got the shadows on that dark side, like that look we're going for. So negative fill does a great job of cutting out that light and make sure to just take that in, find your frame line, get it as close as you want, and then you work, work your way back and see what works for you, what works for your shot, what works for your scene, every lighting situation is different. And then again, if you're going for more of that high key look, don't be afraid to take some balance and just fill in the shadows. If, if it's too dark and moody for you and you want that airy look, take that bounce card, fill in the shadows just a little bit more. And then lastly, we're gonna use our haze, our fog machine. I've just got one of those Halloween foggers. They work great once you kind of flap the, flap the fog around and get rid of that smoky look. But we're gonna use that just to add a little bit more atmosphere, a little bit more grit character to your shot, just to make it look a, a tad bit nicer. And remember, less is more when it comes to haze. And there you have it. We got a pretty solid interior daylight lighting setup with absolutely no lights at all. So I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you found enjoyment out of this. If you got bored, that's totally fine. I've always said class is a lot better with a friend. So go ahead and tag that bestie. So next week we can both tune in together and make the next class just a little bit more fun, you know? But that's all I've got for you guys. Class dismissed. Take care, see you next time.